Hi, my name is Cynthia Bell of the Literacy Assistance Center, and today I'm going to share a quick how-to video with you. How to use Zoom polls for formative assessment in the digital classroom. The online classroom is more than just Google Classroom, which is essentially a repository of assignments that you give your students. You can use certain video conferencing platforms such as Zoom to provide digital instruction for your learners. The online classroom is a place for learners to gather, just like the physical classroom, to engage in collaborative learning, to receive engaging instruction, and to have their learning assessed in real time. There are two kinds of assessment, formative assessment and summative assessment. Formative assessment is for the learning. It happens while the learning is taking place and helps instructors to know how to proceed with their instruction. Summative assessment, however, is of the learning. It's after the learning has taken place and helps instructors to understand what skills and knowledge that the students have gained. Think about being at a restaurant. You, the chef, are making the soup. You're cooking it and wondering if it tastes right. You consider if you should add a bit more spices while it's cooking. You should sample a little to see. And if you do now, you know what's missing or how to fix it before it's done. That's formative assessment. Say you don't sample it, but rather just keep cooking away, not really knowing for sure if it's got everything that it needs. Now you send it out and it gets sent back because it's bland. Well, now you know, but now it's too late to fix the soup because the soup is finished cooking. You will have to start a new batch, a.k.a. reteach it. That's summative assessment. Summative assessment works best in conjunction with formative assessment. Here's a bit more on formative assessment. It does four things. For students, it helps guide their practice and check for their understanding. And for instructors, it helps us to adjust our instruction on the fly as needed. And it also helps guide future instruction that we may provide. Zoom and WebEx both allow for you to use polls within their platforms. If you are using Google Meets, however, it does not have this feature built in. To get started using polls, you first have to enable polling in your account settings. Here's a quick step-by-step -step how to on how to do that. Step one, sign into the Zoom web portal. Step two, click account management, account settings if you are in an account administrator or settings if you are an account member. Step three, navigate to the polling option on the meeting tab and verify that the setting is enabled. If the setting is disabled, click the toggle button to enable it. If a verification dialog displays, choose turn on to verify the change. And now you will be able to start polling. You can create your polls when you schedule your meetings, or you can create a poll while in the meeting. You should consider what topics you wish to assess and develop those polls before the class begins so that you are prepared. There are a number of different formative assessment strategies. One of my favorites is the traffic signal. In the classroom, Students could put up a colored card or post it that would indicate how they were feeling as we moved through a task or topic. Red light meant stop, I'm lost. Yellow meant slow down, you're losing me. And green meant keep going, I get it. So you could use a poll to check in with students throughout the lesson for the same purpose. You can make it anonymous so that they feel comfortable with answering. If you choose to use this poll multiple times in your lesson, you only need to make it once. You can just relaunch the poll in the meeting for whenever you wish to use it again. Here is a sample of what that could look like. The previous slide showed you what it would look like if you created a poll before your meeting started. Now that you've created the poll, you will see the poll is available for you in the meeting settings. Here is a very quick video tutorial on how to launch a poll once you're in your meeting. What it will look like for both you the host, and the students. You can download the results of the polls if you need to, but not if you relaunch the poll, which the video will explain. It's a quick two-minute tutorial that will tell you all that you need to know 
how to launch a poll while in your meeting. These are just some different ideas for using polls in the Zoom classroom. You can use a poll to review previous material, kind of as an entrance ticket. You can also use them for exit tickets, and you can use them for self-assessments for the students while conducting your instruction in your Zoom classroom. There are a number of other effective strategies for conducting formative assessment. They don't fit well with the polling feature, but Google Forms can easily get the job done for most of them. Here are some other strategies for conducting formative assessment in your lessons. Consider which ones you would like to implement and then decide upon which tool will be best for implementation in your virtual classroom. There are numerous tools out there that will help with summative assessment. But remember that formative assessment, which is for the learning, is just as important. So you can get started using polls in your digital classroom. If you would like to download this slide deck, be sure to check the description box below. And if you'd like more information, visit our website at www.lacnyc.org. And be sure to check out our playlist on our website for more how-to videos like this.